Welcome to the video. I'm going to drop dive straight in. Um, the reason that I've been prompted to make this video is purely because, first of all, it's oh my god, my hair sticking up. That's the thing with dreadlocks. You, <laughs> your hair decides to go where wherever it wants to go on that day. I just have to let it be. So. Um, the reason I've been prompted to make this video is because there are a couple of reasons really. First of all, it seems like the videos that I've done on my um, locks, fed locks, have been very popular. You people seem to like it. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't expect that. Um, um, however, um, that being said, I also have a strong passion for uh, fashion. I have a strong passion for fashion and uh, beauty and all that kind of thing. Um, so I thought I'd talk about something that's really quite um, poignant when it comes to having um, dreadlocks. I think a lot of people um, may struggle with this. Um, I did have someone that wrote to me um, way back and asked me about this actually and um, I think it's quite important that we, we discuss this. Now this video is for the sacred divine feminine goddess. Does not mean if you are the divine masculine you are more than welcome to watch this. You may get some tips and tricks <laughs> from it so let's see how we go. Let's get started. So I need to move my plant, it's making a guest appearance. This plant has grown so big, it's unbelievable. So I just need to move it. <laughs> this plant likes to um, be moved all over the place, it doesn't seem to mind. Whereas my Monstera seems to like this corner in specific. So here we are, let's get stuck in. I've got, of course, my flower book. I love my flower book and it's great for taking notes um, for YouTube. Um, I've got poetry in there and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to talk about um, your style. So um, ladies and gentlemen, establish what your style is. So I'm talking about this, um, you might ask, why 
I should take in my clothes and all that kind of stuff. Like, look, let me just say something. If this video, if you if you're watching and you realise that this video is not of any interest to you, feel free to click out at any time. Um, this video is going to be um, in regards to um, the way we um, present ourselves, so our, our aesthetic, because I've been asked this in the past, and I think a lot of people, especially in the early stages of having um, locks, it's quite important to think about this, because everything changes. So, so establish what your style is. What I mean by this is, do you like wearing casual clothes, like casual tracksuits, whatever? Do you like floaty looks, more of a feminine look? Do you like more of a glam, dark, glamorous look? There are several looks, um, obviously. There's ones that I'm probably not mentioning, so, you know, just use your own common sense, although common sense is not so common. But you know what I mean, use your own discretion when it comes to these kinds of things. I am not an expert. I don't claim to be an expert. I am just sharing what's worked for me, what I really love, what I'm happy about, what works for me, what gives me joy, what which um, what fills my cup and makes me feel happy in the world, going out there and feeling fully happy, embracing and loving my beautiful locks and um, spreading that love wherever I go. So also um, we need to establish what is your era because I think this is quite important like is it the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, is it more of a modern look that you prefer? I say this because I'm going to keep referring back to me and I'm going to do that because simply because um, these are my experiences and I can only draw from my own experiences. So this is what I'm going to do. So for me personally, I always, always loved the aesthetic of um, the late 60s, the 70s. I like a bit of the 80s. The 90s a little bit, not too much. But for sure, late 60s, 70s and a bit of 80s. That is my preference. Although today I'm probably not dressed um, in any of these eras. I don't know. Let me show you what I'm wearing today. So um, I'm going to put up little clips of um, videos of what I'm um, outfits and suggestions. So you'll see this top in there anyway. But um, I love this top. You can see it's got like two little dangly bits here. You may like this, you may not like it at all, it may not be your thing, it may annoy you with these dangly bits, but I personally love it. And as you can see, it goes across here. I've just got a little bralette on today um, because it's see through, so <laughs> well, you can wear it without a bra, but you know, if it's really sunny, yeah, it's a problem. And I've got it paired with this skirt, so let's let me just kind of over here and show you. So I've got this skirt on. So as you can see, it's got a, um, it's got like this little slip thing in there, and it goes all the way down. It's quite a long one, and it's quite sheer and see-through. Now I love this. This is quite a floaty aesthetic. It's very feminine. Um, it's quite um, kind of. Um, ethereal and all of that so that's what I'm talking about <laughs> let's move you over here let's concentrate on this so it's just just a quick example I've got lots of examples that I'm going to um, put up so pick your style what what is it you know you don't have to stick to that just be flexible 
Next, um, pick your fabrics. This is really important because you want to feel comfortable. Now, a lot of this um, so-called fast fashion that's out there has a lot of uncomfortable fabric that I personally doesn't sit well with me. I don't like wearing and I find that very uncomfortable, especially um, in the peak of the summer months. It's, it's just not comfortable, so I wouldn't suggest that. Um, so for me personally, this, these are my go-to. Cotton, silk, linen, anything that's breathable and comfortable, anything like that is fine. I do, however, that being said, because I like the late 60s and 70s, I do have some kind of velvet, so I do make exceptions. I've got um, a couple of retro, like classic, vintage, should I say, um, tops that were from, specifically, they were the 70s, uh, late 60s, and they're kind of a crush tie dye and that kind of thing. So comfortable for that. So I make an exception for that. Um, pick your print. So what do you like? Do you like a floral print? Do you like patterns? Do you like plain? You know, this is plain and what I'm wearing underneath and the skirt that I'm wearing, you can't see. But it's, uh, I've got like tie-dye in it and I've got like, um, glass so a popular thing that was around I think there was a throwback in the 90s um, were like a lot of like bells and skirts and dresses and tops and bags I love that there was a lot of tie-dye there are a lot of mirrors um, and things like that and I really like that you have to the reason I say all this is because some things I found in the beginning stages of my journey a lot of things I don't wear anymore they clash with my dreadlocks and I have noticed that a lot of people when they begin their journey stop going down that route um, meaning a lot of people will wear like a whole lot of color and tie-dye big baggy harem um, pants and uh, trousers that we call um, you in America you people you call it um, pants we call it trousers so there, there might be a few things that you're thinking like, what the hell is she talking about that's what I mean trousers um, pants yeah so so um, yeah and um, I noticed in the beginning stages and even myself I had a whole lot of tie-dye and harem um, trousers I've got um, one pair of harem trousers and I really love them because of the fabric. They are 100% cotton, they're breathable and they have like, <clears throat> they have like an, a bit at the bottom where the, um, you know, like when it's really hot at the bottom, like there's a lot of circulation, like air can go through, there's a lot of airflow. So that's really, really helpful. Um, pick your jewelry accessories and things like that. I am going to do either a separate video on that or I may join this. This may be a very long video like my last one. And I'll show you some of um, the examples of what I mean about jewelry. Now you may want to wear what's otherwise, otherwise known as ethnic jewelry. Um, tribal do you prefer gold do you prefer silver and what have you so I'll show you a couple of examples of what I've got on now and um, I'll show you some stuff later this is for example um, a ring that I've got of an independent seller back when um, Camden Town I used that was my old hangout um, place back when it was cool, not cool, not so cool anymore. It's, it's changed completely. But back when it was cool, this is what I got from there. This is um, 
pyrite, otherwise known as false gold, and I absolutely love it. I get a lot of compliments on this ring, but however, it's sometimes it, it it's not very stable in there. Um, these earrings I've got on today, they're kind of like a tribal kind of earrings. Let me just take one off so I can show you better. They're kind of more tribal. All my jewellery that I wear, if it's a metal, it has to be real silver because I prefer personally silver as opposed to gold. Um, I've made a whole video of that, but I don't want to go into that. Um, so, um, and this is a necklace. I met the um, person that actually made this. He was from um, South America and I bought this in a festival. I'll also talk about where you can um, obtain your uh, unique pieces of jewelry and things like that. But um, this is amethyst, so this is my birthstone. I'm an Aquarius. So your shoes. Um, think about that you may think why on earth shoes why is it so important i think it is because it's it's still an expression of who you are and also um, i went through massive change in my style at the beginning of my dreadlocks so I, this is why i'm making this video um to show to tell you um what may come up for you um, it may not you may have already established your style and this is not relevant for you. If it's not, click off now. Um, but if, it, if you find this helpful, then stick around you're in for a treat. So uh, shoes, do you prefer heels? Wedges, trainers, boots, sandals, comfortable, you know, this kind of thing. It's quite important to look at, especially when you've got locks. Um, and lastly, um, have fun, have fun, experiment. Um, now, I, I want to say um, all of these things that I'm mentioning and the reason why I'm talking about this is because sometimes I have found this for myself. This is why I want to pass this on. I found this for myself is that Sometimes I find, I find that too much is just too much. Like, especially when you have locks. Your dreadlocks are within itself an expression. They already are very a creative force of nature. They really are. I feel like your dreadlocks are, your dreadlocks complete your outfit like so when you're wearing all these things it's a question of establishing what really suits my aesthetic because we have to remember that all of our locks are very very different some of us have got very short locks some of us have got very long ones some of us have got very um, thick ones thin ones and all different shaped ones so bear that in mind when you are um, picking clothes and things like this. So also something that I would say is try to support the environment by shopping secondhand, pre-loved, recycled, um, get, get pieces from friends, family, um, and also remember secondhand is unique just like you. And I say that because we've got obviously the fast fashion and it's really not sustainable, people. Um, people may try to convince you to buy a whole load of crap that you don't need. I'm not here to do that. I'm just here to tell you to find your own, um, what works for you, your own aesthetic, what makes you, what brings you joy, what makes you happy. What makes you feel really comfortable despite what other people say? Because look, a lot of clothes that I wear, a lot of people may not want to wear those clothes. Um, and I don't really care because this is me expressing myself to the fullest because I've always done that. Even when I was really young and um, 
I did some fashion when I was young. I also worked in a lot of, um, when I was really young, like worked in um, um, a lot of shops in the West End of London where it was all happening back in the days. And um, I worked in those places. And so um, I was always aware of fashion. And, you know, my, my style has changed over the years and um, it's always evolving however i've always had kind of one um, specific style and i've kind of built on that so this is why i say to you you know try to establish the um your era try to establish whether it's casual or glamorous or whatever and you what you do is you kind of build on top of that and it may change, there may be times where you want to kind of wear something a bit more um, discreet, quiet, if you know what I mean. And there's other times where you want to show the world all the colours of the rainbow and things like that. When I first had my dreadlocks, I went for it. I had all colours of the rainbow. Um, I still got a lot of colour in my wardrobe. Um, but I note that when people are in the beginning of their journey, they do have a lot of colour going on, and that's fantastic, you know. But the reason I'm bringing this to your attention is because I was asked about this a long time ago, and I feel like, especially for women, the divine feminine, it's important to establish, like, a lot of people feel, maybe, when you get dreadlocks, um, in the beginning stages, a lot of people feel, I don't know why this is, but they don't feel as feminine. Um, and we're tapping into the masculine. People feel that way because it is very, very empowering. And it's a driving force, which is a masculine energy. And so that's why we feel that way. Um, however, when the locks start to uh, grow and get very long, the, we, we are kind of the pendulum swings back into the divine feminine. So I think a lot of people feel a bit lost in terms of what to wear and what have you. I would say if, you, if you're feeling like you want to just wear loads of tie-dye and lots of colour, wear it and have fun with it like honestly just go for it don't care what people say I also quite like myself a kind of um, what you might deem as a kind of scruffy look I quite like that it's also known as kind of more of a relaxed look um, and I don't really know how to just describe this look it's also um, been called like kind of the arty look you know kind of an artist where it's a bit kind of scruffy but um not it's not tie-dye or anything like that it's kind of like long baggy jumpers baggy trousers and um that kind of thing um it's hard to to say really what it looks like um if, if i can find any pictures i'll kind of put it in here um and if I can't, I'm just pointing to nothing. I'm just pointing at my, my plant. Um, so I would say establish your look and um, have fun with it. Decide what it is that you really want and stick to that. Um, when I say stick to that, I mean, obviously you can have introduced other things. You know, you don't have to be one way or another. You can do what you like that's a good thing about, about dreadlocks but I do bring it to your attention because someone has mentioned it to me in the past and they were having um, difficulties in terms of looking more feminine and I think that as the divine sacred feminine we we want to feel that so um, that's why I'm bringing it to your attention so I thought I'd bring you into my bedroom because the lighting here is better for showing you some of my jewellery as I've mentioned 
earlier. I think jewellery is a big part of our aesthetic, um, whether that be male or female doesn't really matter. Both are equally involved. So um, I'm just going to show you, I've got a video that I've made a long time ago. So I want to firstly say, um, I already have a video up called my beautiful, my beautiful earring collection. Earrings or jewelry? I don't know. Have a look for that video and I hope that that brings you some inspiration. I'm going to share some, um, some of my jewelry that I really like to wear um, since I've gotten dreadlocks. Now, I just want to say, preface first, sorry, I've got my mirror here. Actually, I've taken it away, but <laughs> I just want to preface here that I've always had um, a preference for the unique. I really, I just love it. I just, I've always loved it. I love um, sort of um, my my jewelry is kind of a bit eclectic. I kind of like a bit of tribal, ethnic, whatever you want to call it. It's just everything mishmash thrown together. What I like, I wear, and that's what it's all about, really. So find your style, and I, I'm saying this because I think when you've got your locks. I feel like people that have locks are really unique. I really, like honestly, I really do. In that, um, well, there's so many things I can say. Like we think outside of the box, we're free thinkers. We are very often non-judgmental and the list goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> but basically what I wanna say is that we are very creative because the fact that you have you've gone on this journey and what your hair goes through and everything like that you cannot have locks if you're not creative because it's a creative process that we all go through um, when we have our locks so um, I'm not going to show all my jewelry oh my god this there's a lot if you want me to do a specific video showing all of my jewelry, I don't have tons compared to a lot of people, but I have quite a bit. I've um, accumulated quite a lot over the years, so I haven't just bought it like within the last couple of years. This has been my journey over many, many, many years. So let me show you some of what I've got. Um, Yes, let me show you this. This was a gift for me. I think this was my birthday. It was a gift. A lot of this are these are gifts and some of them I bought myself. But this was a gift from a very special person in my life. And I love this. And this was bought actually um sorry to come up in the camera like <laughs> just realized what I was doing. Oh my god. Um this was a um, a local shop where I live. Um, I'll go into all of that as well where you might think where does she get all the jewellery from? Where do you buy all of this? Because when I was a lot younger I had no clue. I really didn't. A lot of this stuff was not accessible to me and now you can find this stuff very easily. So this was from a local shop here. I won't say the name of it because then I'll let you know where I live and it's kind of a small town and um, yeah I don't want to say where I live but you know what I mean um, <laughs> it's indigenous uh, it's Native Americans so um, it's got a feather in there and I've no idea I can't remember the stone of this because I've never um, I've never um, had this stone before but it looks a bit like an opal but it's got like so much dimension in there and it's um, it kind of changes with the lighting and everything. I just absolutely love it. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful. And um, there you go. You can see some of it, but not really much, but it's, it's gorgeous, I absolutely love it. And the good thing is you can bend it and adjust it according to your 
wrist. I've got very thin um, fingers and I've got like really um, skinny wrists so I've always had that whether I lose weight, put on weight, whatever, it's just that's how it is. So um, that's that. I've also got this and this I seem to be really attracted to this at the moment. This is abalone and um, as you can see it's a crescent moon and that's all right up my alley because it's in line with my feminine goddess energy and all of that and I've got this which I think I've already shown but it's pyrite full gold um, and I've got my obviously I've shown this um, earlier on got my dreadlocks are making my neck itch um, this is um, amethyst and I've shown this this is my kind of tribal earrings you kind of come up like tribal they're real silver speaking of real silver um, this is the jewelry that I wear I always wear silver in line with the moon so um, another abalone I seem to be finding these now my jewelry um, let me show all of this and then I'll tell you where I picked them up from where you can source them from things like that because they are very unique pieces and they're one-offs and you're not going to find anything like that maybe these ones you will because these ones are kind of um, you do find these um, out and about. I found these ones since I've got two pairs of these these ones I found in my local um, vintage shop but I'll go into that in a moment so you can see they've got two feathers I don't know what that stone is but I've got another pair which I was bought, uh, bought. Um, most of these were bought for me There's someone special in my life um, these were bought for me in Holland I do go to Holland quite a bit do travel quite a bit so that's again it's a dream catcher the gorgeous blue stone on there I love those ones they're really dainty and cute and these ones I think that these are to topaz um, earrings and as soon as I saw them I loved them and I kind of got this really unique shape you can see that so um, those are absolutely beautiful so that's that and this is the kind of thing that I like to wear um, depending on what I'm wearing it sets the mood and then I sort of wear stuff accordingly and so this is um, a bracelet and as you can see it's got all these different colors so that's how it looks like I love this and I'll kind of tell you the prices of everything in just a moment. And I've got some other necklaces, which are this. I love this. And this is Labradorite. This is um, a sacred stone. I absolutely love Labradorite. Very high frequency stone. Um, crystal. And as you can see, like when I wore this, I was told that it really stands out. I don't know what this stone is. Um, I got this recently. I've no idea what this stone is, but um, it's a green stone, uh, gemstone. I just love the um, the whole presentation of this. This is gorgeous. There you go. It's all macrame. All of my jewelry. I've gone down that. You'll find that you start changing up your style and stuff, which is really interesting. Because I've got less silver now and more macrame, it's really yeah, it's interesting. Um, I think this might be Labradorite in here because it looks like a Labradorite, and this is really pretty. On it's kind of like um, it, it goes kind of high up and it's like a choker, and it always reminds me of. I don't know if any of you divine feminine women are watching this. You'll probably go, go and check out that video. I love that video. It's really old school. Janet Jackson and I think Jennifer Lopez 
before she got famous, she was in that video and it's um, that's the way love, love goes or something like that and I love the way they're all dancing and like I love that video. It's so, that video is just smooth, you know. We don't have that kind of thing anymore. It's, I don't know, it's just sad that we don't have that kind of, I mean obviously everything's moved on and what have you but I love that from back in the day the old Janet Jackson but I always remember her wearing this choker and the choker she wore in that I actually had that twice in my life and it just it doesn't stay on properly I don't know how she got that to stay on it does not stay on your neck properly um, on me it's just it wasn't really comfortable so yeah this um, this necklace reminds me of that old school. I know it doesn't really look like that because she has a different one on, but I've always liked that kind of style. And I guess I've never grown out of that style to be fair, but um, you know, just, I love the detail. I love this little bit at the bottom there. It's really gorgeous. And it sits really well because on me, that bit there just, sits really nicely on this bit it looks really really um, beautiful on um, so that's that oh my god itchy nose and it's time you know guys it's that time water break what I want to say about all of my jewelry is that I have collected those um, bits and pieces over the years and um, oh my god there's so much I want to say in this video so I've collected these pieces um, over many years and what I've done is I've gotten them from completely different places all different places now um, I'll tell you some of the places that I've got mine from so some of my pieces I've gotten from charity shops so secondhand thrift shops, yes, look in there, people. Don't be, don't be too too much of a snob, okay? Don't be too much of a snob. Go in those charity shops and see seek out some pieces. You may be very much pleasantly surprised at what you can find because I find, for me, charity shops are a treasure drove you know you go in there and you never know what you're going to get and um, I've gotten now what have I got from charity shops I've gotten this was from a charity shop I think I paid like three pounds for that and that's um, real silver I've gotten this from a char um, no this I got from the um, the car boot sale and it's real silver and abalone and the guy gave it to me for two pounds in the car boot set so that's amazing and um, I've gotten some other jewelry in the charity shop so I've gotten um, what else have I got I got this um, this was my kind of first piece of like abalone that I got from a charity shop and I think this one was five pounds. Um, but I really like it, still got it. And I've had this like for years. This has been with me from my days in Camden, back in the days in London. And um, it's when London was very different to what it is now. Well, uh, 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 Camden, sorry. And um, it's a snake bracelet and I've had it for ages. I think I paid £10 for this and this has been with me for like a few decades. Yes, it's been with me. It's lasted the distance. So, yeah. I've gotten um, some of these from the Hare Krishna temple that I frequent. Um, actually, some uh, these are from different places. Um, this one and this one. Um, are from Austria on my travels it was my birthday and I was gifted these two 
and this one here is a goddess Hindu goddess and th this one is from um, so George Harrison from the Beatles he donated the, um, the big massive temple that's in the very north of London um, the temple there the Hari uh, Krishna uh, temple there and this is a friend of mine uh, took me there years ago and this is what I got from there and all of that so um, I just want to say um, some of these pl uh, pieces like for example this one here I got from um, a local vintage shop and inside that local vintage shop um, local artists um, make um, macrame and they sell it in there and so I got this in there so that was about uh, 15 pounds so macrame you pay a bit more money for and the reason you pay more money for them because they are they take a long time to make and you know there's a lot that goes into that so it's all about the energy people and this one I also got from the same place as this. There were two different artists. This was a lovely lady who made this. So that was from the vintage shop. This was £20. And so yes, so that's... Oh, and of course this was... Um, I think I paid £25 for this in Camden years and years and years and years and years ago. Um, pyrite. And this was a gift. So I don't, I can't remember how much that cost. I think this one was quite expensive. It was way more than anything that I bought myself. So, um, and this one was, I think, uh, 15 pounds. So you see, I don't spend a tremendous, an awful amount of money on my jewelry. I really don't. However, that being said, a lot of people, when they see my jewelry, they think it's worth more than what I've, spent on it which you know it's not really um so i would say that um your jewelry can be you know if you're in the beginning stages and your locks are you're not you know you're not happy with the way they look if you're not happy with the way they look in the beginning sort of first couple of years of your journey um maybe think about your jewelry and what to wear and how to um you know um kind of build a a nice little collection for yourself and um you you may not like any of the pieces i've got i'm not saying you have to um find what works for you i personally think that when you've got locks I think that these types of jewellery look really good with locks because they are unusual. They do not look the same. I mean, there is a, I think there is a little um, trend at the moment going around with these like sort of dainty uh, jewellery that looks really nice, but it's not for me um, because I, I just like unusual um, pieces and I've always been like that, to be honest. So look for different pieces that, you know, um, inspire you and that you like. And, you know, if you are someone who likes festivals, go to a festival. I love festivals and you will find a lot of really nice pieces of jewellery there. You may even get someone to make you a piece of jewellery in a festival. It is possible because people sit down and they start macrame -ing and you know things like that like this was made in a festival so and I think it's really nice because these different pieces of jewelry all tell a story so something that I really want to bring to your attention and there is a reason for this and that is um, what we're purchasing I've become very conscious about what I purchase what I put my coin to and how um, that because everything we do has an impact so the way that we spend our money um, and 
all of that really has a massive impact. For example, um, as I've stated before, please um, be mindful of purchasing um, fast fashion because a lot of these um, places and spaces are really not um, a good environment for um, children, women, and so I'm not really, I'm not in favour of any of that, you know, I'm really not and I'm, I don't want to support any of that. And that's the thing, it's becoming more conscious. And I think anyone that has locks is kind of more of a conscious person, you know, because um, you grow to be anyway. Um, and I think that a lot of the things that I'm doing over the years, everything is changing in my life. One of them is my purchases. So like I said, secondhand thrifting, all of this. Um, when we give, because they are charities, you are not having to go out of your way um, and give to a charity because you're already doing it by, by default, if that makes any sense. Where, where you're spending your money, you're already doing that, unless you specifically want to donate to a charity of your choice, you can do, um, you know, I do. But um, my point is that the way we spend our coin is really important, you know, um, because it does obviously help people in need and that's what it's about as well. Um, so be mindful of where you're spending your money. I do like to also support independent businesses as well, people. So that's why when I buy pieces like this, you know, um, especially locally, um, it helps with community, you know, and that's a good thing. So also, um, what I really wanted to bring to your attention is for myself personally, I tend to um, hold on to my pieces. I don't just, you know, all this jewellery, I do not buy jewellery, keep it for a very short um, time and then just give it away or chuck it away. I don't do that. I do tend to hold on to things until they literally break because I grew up not to be wasteful. And there's a lot of wasteful people in the world and that's why we're in the situation that we are in with all the landfill and everything because of people that are very 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 um they're not conscious of what they're doing they're just like there's no awareness there so um being um a conscious um consumer and being is really important I feel and so uh, where we spend our money um, in a good way that helps um, smaller businesses independent businesses that help charities and smaller or bigger um, a smaller rather and um, organizations and things like that it has an impact and I've become way more aware of this uh, um, with my purchases as time goes on and I don't chuck things away people I do not if something's got a hole in it I sew it up um, I I don't know that's just the way um, also I was um, brought up as well is not to be wasteful and to be mindful of um, when you buy something not to just it's not like here today gone tomorrow I keep things for years and years and years I've added over the years to like my clothes and everything um, when I I'll be honest with you in the beginning of this journey when I first started this journey I went through radical change, as I've mentioned in my previous video. I went through really radical change, meaning everything that I'd had, because I worked in the city in London and I had a different lifestyle. My life was not what it is now. 
it really wasn't. And I had a different lifestyle and that lifestyle pertained to drinking and like, you know, all that stuff, being being out there, girl about town and all that nonsense. And that's what I was doing back then. And so I had all of my clothes were pertaining to that. And I had lots of high heels. I had lots of, um, you know, like really tight fitted skimpy uh, clothes and lots and lots of things that I don't wear anymore. I've given them all away uh, to charity and to my family. And that's when I started to build on my whole new wardrobe image, if you will. That's what I did. So I'm not saying you have to do that, but that's what I did when I started my journey way back before I even had locks, but I knew I was gonna go that direction. So I was kind of preparing myself for that. So um, that's what I did. I'd outgrown that style. And you may find that when you have um, your locks, you've outgrown certain styles and images that you f felt served you at the time. You know, it's, you know, there is a time for everything and for me this is my time now and what I did in the past that was then and that's no longer part of my journey going forward and we just have to you know release let it go and send it love but it no longer serves us so we don't need to hold on to those things I'm saying to keep what you've got and not to just chuck them away and be um, wasteful so it sounds like I'm contradicting myself but I'm not what I mean is that we start to do everything with mindfulness we start to do everything with consciousness we start to use our conscious about everything that we do going forward because this is the journey people this is it it's about opening up to something bigger than ourselves and allowing that space for the new to come in and for the old to go away. This is the time. This is your time. And so use your time wisely. And, you know, most importantly, people really have fun. This is why I make these videos, because I'm hoping that they inspire someone out there and they really help you on your journey. Because honestly, I've, I've found that I've had a lot of fun. I've had not so good experiences in the first couple of years of having dreadlocks, but I've had a lot of fun, like um, getting these new pieces of jewelry. And they're all, I call them my sacred jewelry. You may call it something different. I don't know. This is all sacred to me because they're all very unique. They all come from different places and they all have my energy imbued in them. And they're really, really unique and personal to me, as I'm sure that your jewellery is going to be unique and personal to you. And they mean something, you know, it's not like I said, this is not throwaway fashion. Just because something is not, um, you know, like 24 karat gold and all the rest of it, it doesn't have to be. You know, someone that owns jewellery that's 24 karat gold may have it today and give it away tomorrow. That doesn't really mean much. Um, but I think, you know, ultimately we give things meaning. And all of these are not let's not get it twisted here i am not attached to these but i do not believe in being wasteful i do not believe in being wasteful um and so yes i'm happy to let things go when they need to go however um all of these to me are very very um sacred and precious um and it's important to everything that we have and we start to um, bring into our um, space, it's important to um, give it some kind of meaning because it's, it's a special sacred time. 
every part of your journey with your dreadlocks is sacred. Never forget that. Never forget that. Because if you choose to take your locks out in another year's time, two years time, 10 years time, you can still remember this. It's been a big part of your life. Or maybe you, ha you choose to have lo um, locks for the rest of your life. Who knows, right? But be mindful of everything we're doing because we're doing things with purpose, people. That's what this video is about. It's just to bring all of this to your attention that we're doing things with um, awareness. So I think that really concludes my video. I hope that this video has been really helpful for you. I hope it's given you some inspiration. I hope that it's given you some lovely ideas and um, that kind of thing because, you know, um, we all are unique and so therefore maybe what I like, you may not like, but it doesn't mean that we cannot be inspired by each other. Um, I find um, there's a lot of inspiration out there and I'm always inspired by people, by places, by nature and all that kind of thing. So that's it and I hope to see you in the next one. Go in peace people, namaste.